Enjoy the lift you get from the great taste of Coke. Come on in. From Channel 14 News, this is Newslands, the evening report. A look at today's news, weather, and sports. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm Carlos Senderos with today's top news. Chinese chairman Mao invited the American ping pong team to China while they were playing in Nagoya, Japan. This makes the ping pong team the first Americans to be invited into China since communist China in 1949. I have historian analyst with me today to comment on this. Uh, Jay, are you with us, Jay? We believe that this invitation is caused by China's anxiety about the hostilities between Pakistan and India right now. With an alliance with the U.S., China hopes that its neighbors will think twice before taking hostile actions against them. Right you are, Jay, but more simply, this story began with a young California hippie by the name of Glenn Cowan, a member of the ping pong national team. In Nagoya, Japan, during the ping pong tournament, sources say that Cowan flagged down a shuttle bus while trying to get to the stadium. Well, it turns out that the bus was filled with the Chinese team, and Cowan was trying to find a seat, but there was none. Standing by the door because there were no available seats, and to break the silence, he exclaimed in English, and I quote, I know my hat and hairstyle looks funny to you, but in the U.S., lots of people look like this, Cowan said. Ping pong player Zhuang Zedong of the Chinese team decided to give Cowan a gift, a brocaded tapestry depicting the city of Hangzhou, and then stepping off the bus, the American player were, was photographed with the Chinese player, and in return, Cowan gave Zhuang a shirt with an American flag on it. Right, and this part spurred Mao to invite the ping pong team over to China. We are told that the actual idea came from Prime Minister Zhao Enlai, but we all know that the order can only come from Mao. And without Zhuang Zedong befriending Glenn Cowan, this would not be possible. You know, the Chinese team had the slogan, friendship first and competition second, when they traveled to Nagoya, which again shows that the Chinese were trying to form an alliance with the U.S. This also explains why the Americans won some matches against the Chinese, which are the best play ping pong players in the world. So what does this event mean to the future relationships between the Americans and the Chinese? Oh yeah, you know, I, I think that America, you know, involving itself in relations with China is a great thing. I mean, look, I just met this guy, you know, and he told me to get on the bus, and then he gave me, you know, a little gift from China. I know these Chinese people are really cool, man. You know what I'm saying? It's awesome, man. You know, the key to diplomacy is love comes from right here, man. Right here. This just goes to show that young players like me and, and other Chinese players can make history. So, yeah, right on, man. You know, everyone in America, peace out. Okay, glad to see you. I'll see you back home later. Oh, yeah. It is a great thing for, for my players. And uh, I think that this is a great show of sportsmanship and how it leads to diplomacy. That's a great job. And today it is exemplified by our young players from these different nations. I feel very proud, very proud of Glenn that he befriended uh, this player from China and how this has improved the relationships between uh, the Americans and the Chinese. And uh, this is just a wonderful experience. And I feel that this will go down in history in years to come. So uh, I feel honored and blessed to be a part of this. So thank you. Hello everybody, tên tôi là Linh Thong, em là uh, chơi ping pong, giỏi lắm, um, thắng USA, USA dở lắm, um, chơi uh, chơi nhiều lắm, uh, tập mỗi ngày cũng tập hết, mà xong thắng USA mà làm không. Well, it could mean an alliance with China, and maybe even a visit from President Nixon, who knows anything could happen.